Hi everybody, this is Shane Armand Rowe, and today we're going to show you how to install GOG Galaxy's launcher along with Cyberpunk 2077. Now the first thing you're going to find out here, of course, is that GOG Galaxy doesn't want you to download it because it sees you on Linux and it would rather you install from Mac or Windows. Fortunately, I'll give you a link in the description down below that will download the Windows executable for you. So we're going to go ahead and download that, save it to our downloads folder. Easy peasy. Next up, we're going to go ahead and open up Steam, and we're going to create a new non-Steam game. As we're going to add a non-Steam game, we're going to browse, we're going to go find that in our downloads folder, and we are going to install the launcher first. Um, so this will make sure you change it over here to all files or you won't see the exes. And this will go ahead and install the launcher inside of a brand new Proton prefix. Um, and that's what we want to do at this point. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my Ubisoft installer here, and I'm going to copy this mount command from here. I'm going to also include it in the description below, just in case you don't happen to have one handy. It's just easier than typing it. So I'm going to go into the properties of our new GOG Galaxy, and I'm going to go ahead and set my launch options with this compact mounts, which is going to give me access to the micro SD card as an installation folder. And of course, because this is a Windows game, we need some Proton action. So I'm going to go ahead and use the latest official Proton. You could use some of these other ones, but uh, for those of you who don't have GE Proton, etc., we'll use the uh, latest as at the time of this video's version of uh, 704. So we'll go ahead and we'll start it. Now you'll notice we're in desktop mode and obviously all of these tutorials are like 10 times easier with a mouse and keyboard. So if you don't have a mouse and keyboard, uh, just for these sort of crazy installs, I'd have one handy because we're going to be using cut and paste with the keyboard, the mouse a lot. It's just going to be useful. Okay, we're going to go to our compat data folder. Uh, I happen to have a shortcut here and we're looking for the latest Proton prefix folder that was made, which is this one. We're going to drill in and uh, somewhere in here is where the GOG Galaxy launcher is going to be uh, once it's all done and installed. So um, until we have that installed, we'll have to just sit here and kind of keep an eye on it. Okay, so let's go down. Is it done installing? Sometimes these windows get in the way. You just close things. Oh, there we go. All right, so now we actually do the installation. Okay, so that's okay. It's going to C, which is really our Proton folder. That's fine. We're not going to create a shortcut on the desktop. There is no desktop. Okay, so uh, we're installing now the GOG Galaxy Launcher. Now, this is going to handle cloud saves and game updates and all that stuff. Yes, you could download Cyberpunk separately and just install that as an offline GOG game because that's one of the cool things about GOG, but you'll lose cloud syncs and game updates and all this other stuff. So that's why we're using the GOG Galaxy uh, version of this tutorial. Okay, so it's going to finish up its setup. And we're not ready to launch it at this time, so go ahead and hit finish. Okay, let's go back to Dolphin, and let's see. Ah, x86, GOG Galaxy, and somewhere in here there's an EXE. Okay, yeah, um, Galaxy Client.exe. Perfect, so we need to grab this path. I click right here on the edge, and I'm going to select all of this. I'm just going to use Control-A on the keyboard to get it all. Copy. And we're going to head back to our launcher. And now we're going to change the shortcut. We'll hit, uh, we'll hit Browse. We'll paste this in with the keyboard and hit Open. It only works with the keyboard. Don't know why, but it does. All right, and then we're going to go and find that Galaxy Client.exe. And now that we're no longer uh, installing, why don't we just change this to read actually GOG Launcher or whatever it is that might make sense to us. Okay, so let's take a look. So now, instead of launching the installer, it's going to launch the actual GOG Galaxy client. Okay, so once it runs, you're going to need to authenticate. Now remember, you're going to probably have to push all these windows to the side because they constantly seem to want to pop up. Um, the keyboard continues to pop up and get in your way. Uh, again, mouse and keyboard is definitely the way you want to do this. Um, and especially if you don't know your password, you'll be doing this a couple of times, right? Um, so, all right, so that's not my password. I'm going to have to look it up or, or try a different one. It's in here somewhere. So again, these keyboards and everything keep popping up. It's one of the nice things about game mode. It doesn't constantly try to take over your screen when you're doing this stuff. But 
once we'll go back to game mode here in just a minute once we're done with um, getting GOG set up. Okay, there we go. The proper password has been finally entered and we are ready to actually get into the GOG launcher. Okay, welcome to the update, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you know the GOG launcher probably already, um, but we can uh, take a look here at the games that we own. Now, yeah, perfect, right? Um, now you see it's still importing. Now I've got my GOG launcher hooked up to Uplay and Origin and everybody else under the stars. So I really need to um, do some filtering here, but let's go take a look at some of our options inside the interface, things that might make this easier or better for us in the past. We don't really need to start the uh, GOG Galaxy at launch. We're gonna go ahead and maintain, um, we wanna see our owned games as our starting page. Uh, what else do we have in here? Um, notifications, uh, let's see. Yeah, we probably don't want the GOG overlay. Sometimes the overlays cause problems. Now you could try leaving it on. I'm going to leave it off uh, for the purposes of this just to avoid any uh, sort of performance problems or something of that nature. Okay, so uh, yeah, there we go. Now it's full screen. All right, I think, I think we're probably in pretty good shape here. Let's go ahead and exit. What we really want to do is get ourselves over to um, gaming mode, right? So let's go over there now. Okay, so we are now uh, in gaming mode. We're going to run the GOG launcher. And let's see what she looks like now. There should be no nonsense here. It should be full screen. There shouldn't be any windows in the way. We shouldn't constantly have keyboard nonsense mm -hmm. popping up. It should be nice and clean. And we wait, and we wait, and we wait. Okay, here we go. All right. Yeah, this looks great. Now, you'll uh, obviously, this is not a launcher that is designed really to work well with the uh, Steam Deck, so you'll probably want to, um, you'll probably want to use the touch screen to do this. Uh, use, hold down the Steam button and use your right analog to move the mouse around. As you can see, this is very, very messy. All of the games that I own, uh, on every platform are being imported into this. And that's not really what we want, right? I just want to see GOG stuff. So we're going to want to go ahead and filter that out. That's not the filter. I thought it would be the filter, but it's okay. not the filter. That's grouping and whatnot. And amazingly enough, there's a big sign that says filter. Enjoy. Okay, so let's go in here and we'll only filter down to our GOG okay. games. And um, that... Uh, that should be what we want. That's all the stuff that I own just in GOG, so it's perfect. So let's go ahead and find um, Cyberpunk and let's get that installed. And there it is, Cyberpunk. All right, this was purchased from GOG, so it does give me an install. So let's go ahead and begin the install. Now, here's where, we gotta, here's where we're gonna run a problem. The C drive is only like 37 gigabytes or something for a Proton folder, so you can't install this game internally. Right, so now we're gonna hit browse. You're gonna get this terrible file thing and it's gonna pop up stuff. It's really hard. This stuff doesn't work at all like it should. It's very clunky. So you have to get rid of that. You'll have to click that little slash as best as you can. And it's just really hard to click. Go to run, media, then that's your SD card. And then where am I gonna install everything? I don't have a GOG folder here, I should. So I'll just install it right here into my high C's folder. Good, now it says I've got enough room. That's because it's no longer inside the Proton prefix. It's gonna install it external. No shortcuts necessary. Keep the game up to date and we will hit install. And I ensure you at uh, 60 plus gigabytes on a slow micro SD card. By the way, this is an ultra card, folks. This is the card that people tend to buy. And I don't recommend the ultra card anymore. I recommend that you use the extreme card because the extreme card really makes a difference when you're downloading. So. I can tell you right now that this download is going to take a very long time. So we are going to time lapse that for you. But just understand when people say, what, what SD card should I get? Why should I pay extra and get an extreme card? They all read the same speed, but they don't write the same speed. So it took an hour and five minutes to do that install and it's not quite even done yet. So my recommendation is if downloads or um, writing files to the uh, SD card is important to you, spend the extra cash Go with the SanDisk Extreme. Uh, it's going to, it makes, it's almost as fast. It's almost as fast as the internal storage. That's what you're looking for, right? 
If download speeds are your thing, if you don't care about waiting an hour, great. Go with a cheaper card. Okay, so um, even once it's installed, I'm not time-lapsing any of this because I want you guys to see how long some of these little processes take. Okay, so we're now ready to play. And again, you'll hit play and it doesn't look like it's doing anything, but just be patient. Things are going on in the background. But it's very easy to like get all wigged out and just keep hitting play, but it is there, it's working. So just be patient. <laughs> And you can see, here you go. They're going to sync your, your cloud saves. We're going to make sure that um, you get all your DLC. This is why installing a game without the launcher can be, it works. You know, Cyberpunk would work fine if you um, installed it sideways, if you will, without the launcher. But the launcher does provide some services. Okay. And as you can see, Cyberpunk is running fine, right? So... There's a couple of options that you have at this point, right? So we can leave it running like this. So every time that you launch from Steam, it launches the GOG Galaxy Launcher, which will then perform any updates, any cloud syncs. I think most people want it that way, but there's always the individuals who are like, I just want to run the game directly from the launcher. I don't, I'm from Steam. I don't want to have to load the GOG Launcher and then launch the game. Can I just launch the game? Now, with some launchers or other digital lockers like Origin or Uplay, instantiating the game will often kick the launcher off in the background so that it might actually pick up your saves or things of that nature. Um, but I'm telling you now that uh, GOG is specifically designed to not tie you down to a launcher. This is why a lot of people like GOG, is so you don't have to be tied to this GOG Galaxy. You could just download the game and install it separate. No, quote, no DRM. But for those of you who are dying to actually launch Cyberpunk directly without going through the GOG Galaxy, we're going to cover that here really quick as well. And then we'll turn it back in case you decide that you don't want to do it that way anymore. Sometimes these launchers hang when you try to exit them. This is normal. It happens with Battle.net. It happens with others as well. Um, so don't freak out. Just, you know, hit back and abort and it will clean itself up. It doesn't always do that, by the way, just sometimes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and head back to desktop mode to uh, make those changes. Okay, we're back on desktop. So now we're going to go find that install folder under high seas. Here is Cyberpunk 2077. And we're looking for the game's exe, which sometimes is in the root, but it's probably going to be in this bin folder. And where is it? There it is. Okay, so now we need to grab this path just like we did before. Control A here, copy. Now we're going to jump back into Steam. And it's, again, it launched in the background. It makes me crazy. These windows sometimes take priority over other windows. This is why I say the desktop mode's sort of like in its infancy. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right a lot of the times. All right, so we're going to go back in here. We're going to hit Browse. We're going to paste that folder in. And we're going to scroll down to our EXE. Yep, that's it. That's all we got to do. And we'll go ahead and rename it because now it's really Cyberpunk 2077. It really has nothing to do with GOG anymore. And we'll go ahead and play it. Now, if you watch, the launcher never gets executed, right? So look down in the SysTray area down at the bottom. You won't see GOG running at all. Now, if this was a Uplay game or this was a Origin game, it would have kicked off the launcher and it would be happily sitting down in your SysTray right now. But it's not. Uh, it ran. This literally ran the game as a standalone game. No launcher... You know, no digital DRM locker going on here. It's literally just the game. And again, that may be what you want. But remember, you're not going to get updates. You're not going to have cloud saves. So you may really want to consider close whether or not this is the direction you want to go. All right, so let's speed this up. We're going to go ahead and close out of this by right-clicking the icon and hit close. And we're going to put this back the way that it was, right? We're going to go ahead and make this launch GOG. Because that's, that's what I wanted to do. Um, what am I doing here? Completely out of my mind. All right, so let's go here and find that compatibility folder again. Uh, so once again, we're going to go back to compat data. And uh, watch, my, my, watch my dolphin video. If you guys haven't watched my dolphin video, there's all sorts of cool little tricks about dolphin that I show there. Um, so let's go back in here to the God Galaxy launcher. Right, The Galaxy EXE is here. 
Once again, we're going to grab that path and we're going to copy it and we're going to put it back here. All right, we don't want to launch, we don't want to launch Cyberpunk directly. We want the updates, we want the cloud saves. So open, go back to our Galaxy client. All right? And so let's just make sure that it worked again. All should be as it was when we originally set it up. All right, good. It's launching the God Galaxy launcher. Okay, and once again, it has landed us on owned games, which, again, we really, really want just installed games, right? So, real quick, let's go up here real quick. We'll go to our settings, and we will um, go to, uh, what was it, uh, one of these. Uh, there we go. Um, so, starting page would be installed games. That makes more sense. Owned goes out of control, unless you don't have all your stuff linked up. All right, perfect. Now, we should be able to launch and play this again just fine. And again, there you go. See, it's syncing, right? So if there's any syncing to be done, it'll go ahead and pick up your new cloud saves, etc. And the game is running. Now, in this case, you will see that the launcher is still running in the background, right? Because we never closed it. You could physically go and close it right now if you wanted to, and everything would be fine. All right, let's get this thing closed. So uh, obviously you can't stop it because it's running in the background, so let's close that. Great. And let us go ahead and um, see, it's still down here. You got to close it. It's crazy. All right. I think that's it. Listen, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Helps the channel. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Gog with uh, Cyberpunk and uh, Cloud Saves Preserved. Thanks so much for watching and take care.